One of the greatest challenges of trying to implement a mastery system is that you actually put the student at the center of its learning. You make the student responsible for making decisions such as choosing how to learn, how fast to learn, and actually make sure that they track and plan their progress. Now, of course, a good teacher will sit with them and help them figure out what's the best way for them to learn, teach them the skills they need to do this, and also help them track and plan for their progress. But at the end of the day, it's going to be the student who's going to be in charge of pushing himself to the topics, of having the skills to actually plan and implement these plans. And the teacher is more like a guide that's making sure he's doing this. And so the greatest challenging challenge of the mastery system is actually what makes it a good system. Uh, the, uh, giving the opportunity for differentiated instruction, giving the opportunity for active cooperative learning experiences, which are student-centered rather than teacher-centered, that is actually what creates the problem where the student, when they don't have the work ethic skills to deal with that, they tend to have problems. When they don't have the dedication, the motivation, and the organization that's necessary for them to succeed. And that's actually one of the biggest problems that I had when I first tried to do the system is that I had a lot of kids which are having problems progressing because they did not have the skills for planning and for holding themselves accountable and for pushing themselves through the process. And no matter how much I tried, what was missing was giving him these skills. And so uh, in this video, I'm trying to reprimand that problem and giving both educators which are trying to implement the system and students a actual method to plan and track your progress through the master system in order for you to reach success. And, and so like everything else in education, there is no ultimate solution for anything. But I hope that this video will help students and teachers uh, succeed in the implementation of the mastery system. So let's talk about how to actually make it work. First of all, like with anything else in life, you want to try to do too much. So you got to make a tangible final goal. That means that students have to make a decision of what grade they want or need to get in this quarter or a block of study period. So, for example, uh, you're going to have different kids which have different motivations. Some kids, you know, fight for that A no matter what. Other kids are happy with the B. Other kids are happy with the C. And that's going to help determine what kind of learner they're going to be in your class and what kind of, of planning or goals they're going to have to set how hard they're going to be working. Now, of course, as an educator, you're going to try to push everybody to get that A. And you're going to push everybody to do the best they can possibly be. But at the end of the day, you have to accept the reality that kids will perform at different levels and that any class, even the most perfect class in the universe, you're always going to have A's, B's, C's, D's, and F's. And so uh, you have to live with that reality. So kids have to decide what they want to get, you know, and based on what they want to get, they can set themselves a goal. And based on that goal, they make plans. But remember, sometimes it's also about what they need to get. Because let's say, for example, in the end of the year, you know that you need a certain grade in order to pass the class or to reach the next letter grade to get a better grade in the class. So you say, okay, I'm going to need to see this quarter. So that helps determine your goal. So helping determine your final goal is your study point. What grade do you want? What grade do you need? Is the first question a student should ask itself. Obviously, as an educator, you try to push them to get the best grade possible. Now, careful though to not set too lofty of a goal because it's very demotivating when you set a lofty goal and you cannot meet it. And which is a problem with education when kids are misplaced in an honors class, for example, that they come without the skills to deal with the class. The standard of the class is so high that it's very hard for them to even reach that goal. And that's part of the, of the problem that you have at the end of the year. They can't, no, even though if they did a lot of progress, they didn't actually past the class because they didn't have the skills. They started from a really low end. So that's why placement is so important. But unfortunately, as teachers, we can't take control of that. And sometimes students can't have no control about that either. So you do the best you can. But remember, don't ask yourself for too much. A common thing that happens with students is that they, they, they self-destruct in order to have an excuse. Think of, for example, you procrastinate so that when you finally don't have time to do the project, you say, oh, you know what? The project was too hard. But it's really, it wasn't too hard. It's just that you left it for the last minute, and that's why it was too hard. But, you know, because you left it for the minute, you get to say it was too hard, and you have an excuse. That's how their mind is working to actually uh, not blame themselves for their failures. Because if you blame yourself, it hurts your self-esteem. So to protect their self-esteem, they do these kind of things. Likewise, they also usually set themselves these very lofty, amazing goals. I'm going to get an A in the hardest class I've ever been in my life, even though I'm not a student that's that good. They set this goal they set themselves up to fail so that when they fail, they don't, bl they don't blame themselves. They blame, oh, you know what? The class was too hard. So it's important not to swing the pendulum too forward and making too, too lofty of a goal. You have to know where you are, what kind of student you are, and where you stand 
Otherwise, you're just going to frustrate yourself and demotivate yourself when you can't reach the goal that is expected of you. You also have to realize that at the end of the day, making progress is more important than actually earning a grade because it's what you take out of this class experience in life, what you learn from it, that actually matters. It's the learning itself that matters. It's not the grade. The grade is extrinsic motivation. It's, it, it, you have to want to learn. That's what matters the most. Um, but having said that, it is always good to try to not swing too far, too much, but to try to ask for a goal that's slightly higher than you actually want. Because then, even if you fall short of that goal, you still get what you actually wanted. Now, I'm not saying you know set up an impossible goal, but set up a goal slightly above what you need. All right. Also, although this goal is very important to set for yourself, it shouldn't be your focus. You shouldn't be worried about, I need to get that A, I need to get that A, I need to get that A. Or you shouldn't be worried about, I got to pass this topic, I got to pass this topic, or I got to pass seven topics. No, you should be worried about, what do I need to do today to pass this topic? In other words, don't worry about the end so much. Yes, have the end in your mind, but worry about the means. Worry about what you got to do today to get to this topic at the end, to get through, the, through everything you need to do at the end. It's better motivated to focus on smaller, achievable tasks rather than focusing on achieving this big task uh, all at once. In other words, focus on one thing at a time. Now, even that, even though it's better as you're going through it to focus on each task, you need this final goal to help determine your pace or how fast you're going to go through this. So let's give an example of what I'm talking about here to actually help you out um, with this. Okay. So for example, in my currently Earth Space Science class, uh, if you have an honors or space science class on the fourth quarter, you have to do seven topics plus the science fair project. That's what you're going to do this quarter. But because of the curve that I use, the mastery curve, uh, you don't need those 9,400 points, which is what you would get by doing seven topics plus the science fair project to pass. You only need about 7,600 points to actually pass with an A. So if your goal is to get an A, you know you need 7,600 points. So remember, you got to set yourself up a goal. Once you have this goal, you know what you need to do or how many points you need. And that's what I'm talking about here. Uh, likewise, for example, if you look at the biology mastery, uh, mastery points for this topic, you see that in order to get an A this quarter, you need 4,050 points. And so you know once you get what you want, you find out what you need. And based on what you need, you set up your pace. And we'll talk about that on the next slide. So that's why it's very important to set up those goals. So let's talk about that now. Once you have those goals in place, now you can move on to actually using the mastery goal sheet, which I just showed you, to determine how much you need to do in order to reach your goal. And that's what I was just talking about. Once you have the determination, you find out how many days you have to actually reach your goal. So, for example, you get the, the, the date school's calendar and you count how many classes you're going to have between now and the end of the quarter. And you find out, okay, so um, I need to do this many points. Let's say, for example, I want to get an A in biology. Uh, so that's the example that we were doing. And so I need about 4,050 points. And I know that a 1,000 of these points are, this quarter are going to come from the Science Fair Project. So really, I need 3,000 points, right? Now, if I need 3,000 points and I have, say, 16 days left, that means that i got to get a certain number of points per day in order to achieve this goal. And so what you're trying to do there is to calculate a rate or an average number of points that you need per day in order to reach the goal. Now, based on this rate, you plan out how many days you can spend on a topic. And that's what you need to do to, to actually succeed. So at that point, you, what you do is you get out a calendar, all right, and you mark down on the calendar all the days you have the class. And then you see, you see like, okay, this is how fast I got to move to finish this. And so that means I got to do this and this, this and this date. So let me sh actually give you an example using the earth space science as an example. So let's say, for example, I want to get a B this quarter in earth space science honors. So I'm going to need 6,000 points. Now, of course, a thousand of these points are going to come from completion of the science fair project. So you really need, uh, you know, 5,000 points. So then you get a, yourself a calculator and you go, okay, 5,000 points. I get about an average of a thousand points per topic. So I need to do five topics. And that's pretty much how it is. You need to do five topics plus the science fair project to earn yourself a B this quarter if you're doing earth space science. Now, that means that you have to look now at how many days you have left. So let's look at the calendar then. You get a calendar, all right? So you go to the months of April. So you go to the month of April and you figure out, okay, so today, let's say I'm doing this video on the April 19th. 
Um, so it's going to be somewhere here, April 19th. And then you find out, okay, so I'm going to have you next time on Monday the 23rd because we're on a block schedule, and the 25th and the 27th, and then the 1st and then the 3rd and so forth. So you're going to write down the days that you're going to have that class on. And you're going to put all these days up on the calendar, and you're going to count them. So I got 16 days. But if I have 16 days and 5 topics, what does that mean? So you're going to do the math. I got... 16 days and five topics to cover. That means I got to do about three topics, uh, three days per topic. So that means it, I'm going to plan it out. That means that I'm going to spend the 23rd, the 25th, and the 27th on that next topic. Then I'm going to spend the 1st, the 3rd, and the 7th on the topic after that. Then I'm going to spend the 9th, the 11th, and the, the, the 15th on the topic after that, and so forth. So you see, you, you separate then the, the quarter into blocks or chunks, in, and you sp figure out, this is how many days I have to do that topic. That is a very important process. So you're going to use this to plan out how fast you need to move through the topics. Okay. Once you know that, and you make yourself a calendar, a plan for the quarter, Right? What are you going to do next? Now you have to plan your topics. So let's say I got, I'm, gonna, I'm, not, I'm at that B pace. So I got to do uh, a topic every three days, right? Now, based on how many days you assign per topic, you got to make a plan to tackle this topic. All right? So how, let's, do, let's see how you do this. First, you're going to make sure that you leave the last day to take the test because you're going to need a day to take the test in class, you know, after you get enough points on the practice or, or the mastery system. All right? So the test comes last. So if you were doing the example I was just doing, the third day of the topic is going to have to be for the test. At least two days still. You're going to leave at least one day to earn enough mastery points to pass the topic at level four and level five. In other words, to do practice points to, to get ready for the topic. So that means that's your second day, you know? And you have to leave at least one day or a half of a day to take the quiz and to clarify misconceptions in class. So that means if you're working at a B pace, you cannot afford to spend a day studying in earth-based science because if you do that, you're probably not going to pass the topic uh, in time to get a B, which means you've got to do your level one, which is the studying at home before that first day of the topic. You've got to learn at home and do what you want to do. But if you're going at a slower pace and you say you have four days and you're shooting for a C, that means you can use a day in class to actually study. All right? But... You have to see if you have that day to spend in class doing the study, which is supposed to be the flip thing that you're doing at home, right? So if you do not have enough days passed, then you better pl plan to take the free quiz on the first day. And that's if you only have a few days left. Now, I'm doing this out of 16 days because that's what I have left right now in the quarter. But quarters usually have much more than that. Quarters usually have 23 days. And so the pace is never going to be that absurd uh, on any given quarter unless you slacked off, you know? But that's very important. You understand what you need to do. I hope you do. So let's review what we talked about so far. You decide what grade you want. Then you see how many points you need to get that grade. You divide up by how many days you have left. And you get an average number of points you need to achieve per day. And by finding out how many points each topic is worth, you can figure out how many days you have to per topic. Then you get a calendar. And you see all the days that you have me uh, or have the class. And you can put that down. And figure out, I got to do this topic in these three days. But I have to leave one day to take the test, one day to get a mas mastery points in the practice levels. And I got to give one at least half a day to pass the quiz, which leaves me only half a day to study if I'm going at a B pace in the example of the Earth Space Science honors that we did. But the pace may be different if you're talking about biology. It may be different if you're talking about a different grade and your goal. And you should work with a teacher if you're confused about that to actually set up your plan. Sit down with, with the teacher, ask me, and we can sit down together and make a plan for you uh, and make this happen. But this is how you do it, and this is how you actually have to implement that, okay? Now, we're going to continue from here in the next video. We're going to be talking about how to actually achieve this and make sure that you push yourself to the levels fast enough to make this a reality, okay? okay see you guys then.